and this is Synopsis, your first early morning briefing. It's Wednesday, September 13th, 2006, and here are today's top stories. NBC has come to digital terms with Warner Brothers on NBC's freshman primetime series Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip. The network and its station affiliates will have the rights to stream the show on their website, as well as SVOD, wireless, and third-party VOD sites. Warner Brothers retains the rights to pay downloads on all retail sites, including iTunes, AOL, and the Amazon. Disney ABC Television Group's ABC Entertainment and Warner Brothers Television will team up to digitally distribute the new drama The Nine, which is scheduled to premiere on ABC on October 4th at 10 o'clock. The terms allow ABC to distribute the show's episode's premiere via streaming as a non-permanent offering on the ad-supported ABC.com broadband player. Each episode will be available for four weeks. Warner Brothers will then make the show available for purchase commercial free the day after each network broadcast via a variety of digital download retail platforms. The Nine is produced by Sunset Road Productions in association with Warner Brothers Television. Hey, guess what? If you had a promo or a commercial in this daily podcast, it would go right about here. Coming up under more good stuff today, HBO renews The Wire, shift in broadcast evening news rankings, New York Times to sell Station Group, and NBC Universal launches NBBC. Lots to talk about, so let's get going. And while I'm telling you about all this stuff, take a look at these beautiful shots provided to us from the Internet Movie Archive. And while I'm telling you about all this stuff, take a look at these beautiful shots provided to us from the Internet Movie Archive. HBO has announced it will pick up one more additional season of The Wire, which will be its fifth and final season. The fourth season of The Wire just launched this past Sunday and drew in 1.5 million viewers. Not bad considering season three ended two years ago. We TV hopes you won't pull your hair out over its new series, Hair Trauma, which premieres October 11th at 10 o'clock. Set in the salon of Ellen Lavar, hairstylist to the stars, this six-part half-hour series looks at all the hair disasters and mishaps that happen within the diverse group of customers in this family-run business. It's produced by Red Moxie. Well, a slight shift in the evening news leadership from the average of last week to Monday night, September 11th. NBC was back in front with 8.27 million viewers, followed by ABC 7.87 million, and the CBS Evening News with Katie Couric was in third with 7.49 million viewers. The season finale of HGTV's Design Star on September 10th at 9 o'clock became the network's highest-rated primetime program among adult 25 to 54 with a 1.7 rating and with the adult 18 to 49 category at a 1.3 rating. In addition, the Design Star's last episode brought in the network's best ratings among women 25 to 54 at a 2.3 rating. The New York Times Company has announced plan to sell off its nine network affiliate television stations and plans to concentrate solely on its newspaper and digital publishing divisions. The stations are expected to bring $33 million in operating profit in 2006 on revenue of $150 million. This division made up of 4% of the New York Times 2005 revenue of $3.4 billion. The nine stations are located in Scranton, Norfolk, Moline, Memphis, Huntsville, Fort Fort Smith, Des Moines, and two in Oklahoma City. The New York Times will retain ownership of the New York Times, the International Herald Tribune, the Boston Globe, 15 other newspapers, two local radio stations, and 35 websites, including about.com. Broadband and digital. In an anticipated move, Apple has developed a new gadget allowing consumers to stream full-length movies, photos, podcasts, and TV shows to their home entertainment system. Codenamed ITV, the player will cost $299 and be available in first quarter next year. Apple's new movie service will sell new releases from the Disney, Pixar, Touchstone, and Merrimack Studios for $12.99 if pre-ordered or purchased during the first week of release. Typically, new releases cost $14.99 and other other libraried full-length films cost 9.99. 
Currently, there are approximately 75 films available. Apple has also inked a deal with the NFL, very exciting, that will allow fans to purchase downloads of video highlights of NFL games via iTunes following the games. The video highlights can be purchased piecemeal for $1.99 a piece, or fans can sign up for a season pass called Follow Your Team that will cost $24.99. Finally, as part of the NFL deal, iTunes will also offer the NFL's network show, NFL Game Day, at $1.99 per show, or $19.99 for the whole season. NBC Universal and its broadcast affiliates will launch an independent business-to-business -business unit to distribute NBC Universal and other independent video to users worldwide. Launching with more than 24 media partners, the NBBC, which stands for National Broadband Company, will connect content generators, website owners, and advertisers throughout the web. NBC, uh, NBBC allows content owners the chance to earn revenue through syndication by exposing their brands to new viewers. Website owners will earn incremental ad revenue with the third-party video programming, while advertisers reach a greater audience through NBBC's network. Consumers will be able to download their selected uh, ad-supported content for free and archive, archive it on a customized video player. Well, the PGA Tour and Turner Sports News Media are partnering in a multi-year online and mobile deal for Turner Sports New Media to produce and sell ad space on PGATour.com, the official website of the PGA Tour. The website features coverage of the tournament, notes about the players, and other audio and video highlights. Both entities are planning enhancement to the site, which will launch in 2007. The Mark Burnett Productions and AOL interactive reality game Gold Rush begins today at AOL.com forward slash Gold Rush. Hosted by Mark Steins, co-anchor on Entertainment Tonight, Gold Rush offers a pot of gold worth 2.2 million bucks as players pass through 13 rounds by correctly answering pop culture questions and clues. E has introduced two new series for its broadband player, The Vine at E Online, as well as for wireless platforms. Planet Gossip, a weekly 52-episode series about celebrity rumors featuring industry insiders. The first episode debuts October 3rd. And second, Carter's on the Couch, created as a companion to E Entertainment's television new eight-part series, House of Carter's. This online version brings in a therapist to explain what is happening in the Carter household. This show is set to premiere October October 2nd, along with the TV series debut. This week we've launched a new feature on the Synopsis website called Programmer Showcase. This advertiser-supported page features one network syndicator studio's video or videos of choice to showcase on the Synopsis website and will continue to evolve as creativity demands. At the center of today's Programmer Showcase is the CW and its upcoming season set to launch September 20th. Check it out at www.synopsis.com. It's very cool. Moving along to production development and casting, two items under that banner this morning. James Cromwell and Eddie Izzard will both join the cast of Fox's 24 for season 6. Cromwell will reprise his role as Philip Boyer, the estranged father of Jack Boyer, played by Kiefer Sutherland, and Izzard will play a villain, Darren McCarthy. Day 6 will begin in January and air Mondays on Fox at 9. Animal Planet has ordered up a new 13-part series called Misadventure from UK indie production company Tiger Tigers Productions. Hosted by new talent Rachel Rienstra, the show takes a parallel view of animal life and modern-day urban life as Rachel observes animal behavior in the wild. The show is currently in production and is expected to premiere in January. Well, I have the rating summary for Monday night according to Live Plus Same Day Ratings from Nielsen Media Research. ABC led Monday night with a 3.710, adult 18 to 49. Fox escaped from the pack to win at 8 o'clock with Prison Break at a 3.710, while ABC's part two of its movie, The Path to 9-11, came in second at a 3.19. ABC did the best from 9 to 10 with a combo of its 9-11 movie and President Bush's speech at a 4.210. Then at 10 o'clock, ABC won again with the conclusion of its movie in prime time at a 3.810. And today's trivia question, what was the name of the Kung Fu Kane's brother who lived in America? 
Well, that's it. Be sure to check your email for the full printed version of today's synopsis with new executive moves, more on ratings, loads of new classified ads, a few of the stories that didn't make it into this podcast, and of course, tonight's primetime broadcast lineup. The music and synopsis was composed and performed by Michael J. Whalen. For Cynthia Turner, who wrote and compiled synopsis in Connecticut, I'm Trish Bahanek.